What's going on, guys, and welcome back. In Marvel Snap, there's only a handful of S-tier, kind of top-end cards, and today we're going to focus on making one of those as busted as possible. Doctor Doom is a 6 energy, 15 power, widespread card that has tons of potential. The Doom Patriot is a deck full of control options. We have widespread power and multiple cards, and a ton of synergy that's really easy to rely on to outpower the majority of the decks out there. Now, like always, this has a lot of mechanics, and we're going to go ahead and talk about the synergy, break down each card and explain why they are in the deck, talk about replacement options, the top things to avoid, or basic strategies, and then we'll jump in and I'll show you how I pilot the deck myself. So when you take a look at all of the cards in the synergy, our main focus is to spread power as wide as possible and as quickly as possible while having a bunch of cards to boost those up. Now let's start off with the keys to the deck. We absolutely have to start with Dr. Doom, who's the main cornerstone of the deck itself. Uh, Dr. Doom and his Doom bots, as you know, have 15 power spread across the lanes. However, with the likes of Patriot, we can go ahead and boost up the Doom bots to make up to a 625 power spread across all of the lanes and locations, while also limiting how many cards and combos our opponents can play. Dr. Doom is a huge key winning piece to the deck, but just in case we don't draw him, we have our second option in Ultron is just a huge MVP in the deck and Patriot decks, but with Sandman, he's going to get an extra boost. Now, first of all, he's pretty damn easy to telegraph. You, you know, players know if you're playing Ultron, but when you have Sandman, they're going to have to commit that one card they can play a turn to counter him, and it's easy to play around that. So I really enjoy Ultron. It takes a little bit of time to get used to how to play him correctly and how to get your cards on the right locations and lined up. But he's fantastic, obviously, with the Patriot. His drones are going to get a massive boost. Just with Patriot, they're going to be 12 power on that one location. You can get that up to 20, even like 24 power, which can obviously beat even like Shuri decks at multiple locations. So great card overall and just not a bad backup plan if we don't get Dr. Doom. Now we've talked about two huge Marvel villains, but we haven't talked about the last widespread power card, the true terror of the MCU. Don't let this happy-go-lucky pastry bacon mammal fool you. Our powerful one cost friend here is just awesome. Up to 13 power for one energy. You can play her early, you can play her late. She doesn't necessarily say that you're playing a Patriot deck. You know, it could be Destroy, Zoo. So we have that advantage for us as well. And again, with someone like Sandman, which we'll talk about, it's great to get that extra boost of power for just one card. Now, this wide location power approach is all going to work primarily because of one card, Sandman. Now, let me tell you, is Sandman a great card? No. In fact, he's probably one of the most frustrating cards I've ever had to build around, but he does completely wreck meta decks right now, especially with Death Wave and Mr. Negative. And I finally found the perfect home for Mr. Sandman. Now, the main strategy of this deck is to take advantage of all of the cons that Sandman provides. He's pretty trash because you have to play him on turn four, and you only have two turns to make up all that lost power. But lucky for us, we've built the deck around it. So we're going to be playing a lot of cheap cost cards early, like Squirrel Girl, like Mysterio, Patriot, Debris, and spread out that power play Sandman on four, and then we're going to simply close the deal with a couple of cards on turn five and six. Usually, if we play down something like Squirrel Girl, Nightcrawler, Patriot into Sandman, and then follow up turn five with something like Blue Marvel, and then Doctor Doom or Ultron, that's typically enough to win you any game. Now, let's go ahead and move on to our supporting cast. We've got the five cost drops with Blue Marvel being our catch-all Doctor Doom and Ultron bot booster. We have a White Tiger, another great option compared and synergized with the Patriot. To get us a 9 power, 11, 12 power Spirit Tiger, absolutely insane. We can combine that with Wong as our 4 cost drop. He's going to be our first replaceable option. Now, Mr. Wong is obviously going to work great if we don't draw Sandman, or if we do draw Sandman, we can play him on 5. Again, their opponent is going to have to commit a Cosmo, only Cosmo on turn 5, so you typically don't see that, or Enchantress, because uh, you have other ways to kind of win around that. So Wong typically gets his value with Spirit Tigers or Doctor Doom for turn six. Really enjoy Wong. Again, you can replace him outside of the deck uh, to go ahead and get something like Shang-Chi if you want to go ahead and counter Shuri out there with Sandman. A Shang-Chi just ends what Shuri can do for the most part. Overall, love Wong, but let's talk about Debris, who's one of the bigger win conditions in the deck. She's got widespread power with the rocks on her side combined with Patriot, Blue Marvel, or Kazar. And the best part is we can go ahead and use her on Wong for massive disruption. 
Now, the big thing about debris is where to play here. And typically, guys, on those first couple of turns, if your opponent is stacking up on one location, throw debris in the other and really fill that up early. It's going to make it even harder for them to dictate where to place their one and only card because of Sandman. Typically, debris is a big reason why I win a ton of the matches. Now, we do have Kazar as well, our four cost drop. He's going to synergize with Ultron's bots. We have Debris Rocks. We have Squirrel Girl. So you do get a lot of benefit out of him. By now, you guys know that Patriot and Mystique are going to play the main role in the deck. And Mystique can go ahead and copy Kazar or Blue Marvel if you can't copy the Patriot. Now, the best part of this deck, guys, is there's so much flexibility. Our last spot here can be used for Mysterio, Zabu with a couple more four costs or even Nightcrawler. Now, Nightcrawler is a new addition that I just plugged in. He works nicely with Sandman and Kazar and what we're trying to do with Ultron and Doom. We can simply move him around and it doesn't matter where we play him before Sandman because we can adjust later on and he's the only card that can do this early on for the cost. So what I like about it is we can buff him up with Kazar, we can buff him up with Blue Marvel, and then finally, we can jam them all into one lane before we do Dr. Doom or Ultron for the win condition. Uh, I find them a bit better than Mysterio. Uh, you don't need all of that lane clogging, uh, but Mysterio is great for obviously the head games. And then if you don't want to do that, I think Zabu works really well, but I wanted to make a more budget friendly deck, if you will. Now, looking at the replacement options, I also threw in some ramp ideas and I had that with Silver Surfer. Uh, Patriot Ramp is super underrated and I expect it to start popping up a bit more. I was throwing in something like Odin and Dr. Doom and then you can build up those Doom bots even more, but I found this deck a bit more consistent. Obviously, things like Abomination and Cyclops, other Patriot non-ability cards are going to work. Uh, Ebony Maw is great to go and fill with the Dr. Doom lanes and you're going to have some big priority early against Sandman. You can also run a Zero Style deck, which is phenomenal with our options here. Uh, Titania works with that as well. Lastly, we've got Ronin and Maximus. I think they actually have a huge spot in this deck. I didn't want to focus on too much at once, but I think playing Maximus on three, Sandman on four, Ronin on five, and Ultron or Doom on six is absolutely filthy. We're going to jump into some pilot matches so that you guys can see where I place the cards. But more importantly, you can see what you win against in the different scenarios that you're going to go through with this Doom Patriot deck. Mr. Ryan Roke. And we have Apocalypse getting a Sokovia discard to start us off. And we lost our main win condition. Happy days. Happy days. All right. Well, he's giving us a thumbs up. And so this guy, if I had Sandman, you know what? We're filming. We're going to continue. Probably in that instance, you want to retreat if you don't have Sandman. But to be honest, like, screw this guy. We're going to beat him. Well... Well, I don't, did he seriously have Swarm and Apocalypse as the two cards he just discarded? Like that actually just benefited him massively. Are you kidding me? We're going to have to really reduce the cards he can play. Uh, we, can't, <laughs> we can't do anything on this turn. We're going to hope for Patriot on three. And if we don't get Patriot, uh, maybe Nightcrawler, but... Yeah, this is going to be uphill sledding. If we can get Nightcrawler, we have a good little Kazar blue, kind of like mini zoo deck going on. And this is hot. This is absolutely huge for us. In fact, I think that might win us the game. Let's uh, let's see what happens. We're going to probably play Kazar or Blue Marvel. Really doesn't matter. Probably Blue Marvel uh, because we have Debris on the board on Onslaughts. Followed up by hopefully Patriot. Wind aid my hand. Okay. We can get there later. Don't have to worry about that. We got the Patriot. That's absolutely massive. Only problem is we're going to run out of space a little bit. Let's throw the Patriot down here. Probably, right? We want to go Patriot this turn or another card. Let's go Patriot. And we're also going to snap on him. We'll probably play Ultron in the middle. He doesn't believe me. You don't have to believe me. We're going to win. We're definitely going to win left side because our... Guys are going to be cracked. And maybe he's got an Enchantress, but I doubt it with the deck build he's running. All right, he's going to go Morbius. That's going to be pretty hot for him. Good thing we're not looking to win that lane. In fact, we're probably going to go... Let's see here. So if we go... Kazar, because we can't do Blue Marvel anymore. Um, I would think this would get us the win. We're doubling up these cards here. 
You would think that this is strong enough to get us the win. We don't have Dr. Doom. We have to keep that in mind. We're going to go Kazar here. He doesn't really have any other ways to discard, too. He's already done his big play, right? Yeah, dude, we totally won, right? We'll play Ultron middle. That's going to go up to 18. Our little dudes are going to be cracked. They're going to be 5 apiece, 6, 12. We'll add 12 and win that. Oh, dude. With the worst luck possible, we had Sokovia get rid of our Doctor Doom. He had a discard deck, and we're still going to win. And we'd even play Sandman. Now, albeit Onslaught Citadel kind of saved our skins, kind of helped him out too. He's got a big apocalypse that he could play on any lane. And that's probably what he's trying to decide. And it doesn't matter what lane he plays on. Check these big boys out. Seven a pop. Seven a pop. That's crazy. <laughs> so that was a great example, right, of how we can win uh, games. Even when things go wrong, he still doesn't believe me. Um, and yes, this helped out a ton. It kind of helped supercharge us, but we didn't have to do that much. We have a widespread debris. We have a widespread squirrel. And then we ended it with Ultron, Patriot, Kazar. Beautiful stuff. We beat a really good deck as well. So perfect first game. Moon Knight. Let's see what you have. We're going to go squirrel in the middle here. To start us off, we already have Sandman, so spreading ourselves off wide now is, is definitely what we want to do. And uh, we're going to really limit what this guy can do uh, right after turn four, right? If we can get ourselves going. Uh, screw that. How about turn two? We got the peak that gave us a huge advantage with these two cards. We're going to love that, guys. Let's definitely go Sandman now. And uh, I guess White Tiger, too. We're going to snap into that. He's going to stay. No way he was expecting Sandman. Not a shot. All right, cool. So he's got Morbius down. Pretty big uh, card to play with only one. Both of us get hit where we can't do Super Flow. Uh, not too big of a deal. And uh, we're headed to our next turn. So we can play Blue Marvel for 3-5. Um, absolute cracked there. Uh, we can play the Patriot as well. Don't want to play into Vibramium. Want to keep our uh, potential draw up. So we'll play Patriot here as well. And then hopefully we just draw our Patriot or Ultron. The quick GG's. Looks like he might be diverting to a Modoc Hella. So we should as well. And honestly, guys, I cannot believe this is what I'm going to do. But we're going to go Debris left side. Oh, I guess we could go middle. Let's go Debris middle. And then we're going to just do Blue Marvel. So if he is doing the Modoc Hella... This is going to fill him up. He's not doing it. He he tricked us. I mean, dude, there's no way he can he can beat this. We don't have a lot going on for us, but there's uh, really nothing he can do. We're just going to blue Marvel all around. And uh, even if he hits us with like a MODOK, uh, we would win mid or we would win left, vice versa. Let's see what he plays. Probably MODOK mid. No, Dracula mid. Okay, I see you. And we're going to go and close it off with a Kazar to boot and uh best of luck to this guy we're winning by more than a pock in the middle this is not going to be easy for him he's out of here Victory. it's hard for discard to catch up to that sand man especially that early okay we have a muse here and we have shuri's lab night crawler patriot and squirrel girl and uh looking at the options we do have let's go ahead and play our Nightcrawler now get a 1-4 Nightcrawler. Not bad. And next location is Danger Room. So we can safely play into that with uh, the likes of like Squirrel. Uh, and then we can move into that with Nightcrawler. Going to go and play that now. Uh, we have Debris and Patriot. Uh, so we, we have ourselves pretty set up if we can snag our Sandman. Uh, but if not, we'll just show you guys, you know, the other win conditions of the deck, right? So we have Debris now. Um, we're going to play Debris right side, I believe, just because we still want to try to win Hala. And we don't want to lose these rocks. So we're going to go with this. That way it also clogs up Hishuri's lab. You know, with this deck, you want to like limit a lot of what they can do as well. And uh, that's where Debris just comes in really clutch. So Hala is about to explode. We have a Nightcrawler. It's turn four. There's really nothing outside of like a Typhoid that he could play. Um to beat our Hala, so just the Nightcrawler move will be uh, all we need there. 
Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and play Patriot left side. I anticipate that he's probably going to play Devil, and we do have Shang for that. We also have Shang for that Sunspot if it grows too much. All right, cool. So there's the Sunspot growing uh, past 10. And uh, we are getting pretty full on space here uh, as we head into turn 5. So we can Sandman now. That doesn't do us a lot of good. I think really, guys, just the snap, the, the Sunspot kick with Shang-Chi... It's probably all we need to do here. We could have done like a white tiger this turn. Shang-Chi as our surprise card. But he relied on just building that Shang-Chi up. Or that sunspot up. And it's now dead. Okay, cool guys. So it is uh, our last turn. Danger Room is going to be tough for him to play in. Uh, we have Doom as well. We're just going to go simply Doom uh, right side into Danger Room. So he does have no energy spit. So he can play She-Hulk. He can play Infinaut here. Is this going to be she or no? Because we have the Patriots. We're good there anyway. Wow. Win with the risky infinite middle danger room. Didn't die to be fair. But we still won on the power difference. This was also crazy clutch how close this came. Uh, and we managed to tie that up, which is pretty awesome as well. This, though, that was the fact that he put four cubes on a 25% gamble that I lose all the time is, is kind of shocking. Uh, but big time Doom finish there. No Sandman. Still worked out just fine. Sleepy Dog in Sinister London. Gotta love that. Okay, so we're going to do Debris by three for sure. Let's see if we can get Sandman. Um, Mysterio is a bit awkward as well as Squirrel. So Sandman, this is going to be one where we're going to kind of transition and not play Sandman, most likely. Uh, cool, we have Debris now. Let's just load this sucker up with rocks. Sarah is a great play on this turn. However, it'd be a damn shame if you can't play anywhere. Okay, so we've already maxed out the right side. We're going to snap on that. Uh, we are in turn four. We're going to play double Kazar. And uh, at this point, we're either going to play double Mystique... That is going to be a Kazar as well, or we're going to play Patriot. And probably not do much more outside of that. This is going to be a really easy win, and I'm hoping he stays. Oh my god, he's staying. Really hoping that that guy would not go in the middle there, because of Mojo, but that's okay. Uh, we can Kazar or Blue Marvel here. We'll go in in blue, probably right side. Now he's going to do the same thing. Okay. I think we go Mystique, then Squirrel. And I think we can still beat out the Mojo. Man, we had very similar decks here. Not gonna lie, was a little bit nervous. This guy right here made me a little bit nervous. Why? I don't know. He's a 211. Good God. But yeah, we stopped the Sarah deck uh, because of Debris. Debris has been kind of the MVP uh, a ton of times just because she gives us like a widespread for Sandman. She disrupts. She's a really good card for sure in this deck. All right, so Onslaught Citadel means we pretty much always snap. Definitely excited to have that location. Uh, Kazar, Patriot, all of them are great. You don't want to stack too much on there because he could just Enchantress the whole thing. Uh, but it gives us some pretty dang good odds. Mindstone in the front. Going to go ahead and open that up to a snap. We have Bar Sinister in the middle as well. Probably couldn't ask for better locations here. Hell, we could just play Doctor Doom and have 20 power across all the lanes. Not saying that would win it, but that's kind of cool. The goal is to probably play Patriot, Mystique, and Doctor Doom. He gets two nice ongoing effects, but in the same vein, we now know that we can play our ongoing cards safely. We're getting completely screwed as far as um, our curve goes, because we have not had one card we can play. But that's okay. Unbelievable. Okay, well, we're getting kind of screwed, but we can still win. Uh, 
Altar of Death makes things a bit more difficult. Sandman is going to all but ruin this cat. So I'm thinking we play Sandman on four. On five, we play really anything. Kazar, doesn't really matter. And then we just play Ultron. I think it's the way to go. So we're going to limit him this turn. And outside of him having Cosmo, I think we're okay. All right, so that's going to limit him a ton there. We can go ahead and play Blue Marvel. And I don't think this gives away at all what we're doing. Where is he going to play? I don't think he has anywhere to play. So he's he's just out. And he didn't Cosmo either. So although we will not be winning Onslaught Citadel, uh, I can safely say we are probably going to win this one. Uh, maybe he has an armor to play in there or something. But uh, okay. All right. Not bad. If I didn't have Ultron, I'd like to play. Definitely like to play. But that is going to be one of our easiest matches that we have gotten. <laughs> It's going to destroy all this, but we're up at least by 10 here. He has 7 up on there. And so I'll be a little bit closer. But there's our win. Okay, so Luke's bar. We have Blue Marvel, Patriot, Kazar, and Ultron. He gets rid of our debris, sadly. And we're about to see that Yondu 100 freaking times. So not looking forward to that. We have danger room for our second room. So nothing but great locations here. Second dinner. Really appreciate the fun. Squirrel girl coming out. It's terrible to see. Yondu's just ripping our whole deck, guys. Uh, but to be fair, we do have like a lot of what we need. Patriot going out kind of sucks because we can't mystique it. But we will certainly take it. Um, and it is now wave. Now, this interaction's broken. They actually said they were going to fix it. You're going to see everything cost four cost again next turn. Uh, because no one can play this turn, but apparently this is a bug. So as you can see, everything's still going to be four cost. Uh, which is great because I was going to play Ultron, but now we're going to play Doctor Doom. Um, we now have to match that, and we're just going to Doctor Doom. He's already done his big play, or his big, like, turn play. Uh, so we're just going to simply Blue Marvel here. There's no way he's got Enchantress. So we're going to simply Blue Marvel and then Ultron and call it a day. Okay, Demon. Okay. That doesn't make any sense. Yondu. So he could have like a Null, I suppose. Which would be crazy. Uh, what are the odds he has a Cosmo? I mean, if he has a Cosmo, we would tie here and win by eight here. So even if he does, we still win. We're going to roll it. Doesn't matter, buddy. It does not matter. I mean, we beat Death Wave in the most unconventional order ever, <laughs> but it worked out to our advantage. Skip a turn one. OG Pop in Fresh is who we're playing up against, guys. See if we can take him down. All right, we're going to go Mysterio left side. Love the Mysterio in the middle there. Huge for us. We already have Patriots. Uh, forget Sandman here. It'd be uh, OP. All right, nice. Uh, let's go to play Patriot Middle. Get that five bonus as well. We have Kazar Wong and Sandman. Definitely going to hit him with the Sandman action. Probably, though, instead of going in that lane, we're going to go on the left side here. Because we're going to Wong and Doom into that. Really, no matter what he gets here, I'm fine. Iceman. Oh, that's annoying. Not really. It's five. We're going to play Wong now. Doom on the next one. And this is the this is the deck. It's bread and butter, guys. Absolute bread and butter. Ooh. 
Well, I'll be damned. That was a really good play. But this is why I have Squirrel Girl in the deck. I almost took her out because she kind of gave away that we're playing a Patriot deck, you know, outside of Miss... Like, there's no other thing that really gives it away. But this is why we keep her, guys. Because we're still going to get a pretty cracked lane. We're adding nine to the right. We're going to win left. We're, we're, I think we're going to win every lane. Oh, he had Doom, though, to be fair. <laughs> I mean, it's a good thing we had the squirrels to max out that mid. Because the Doom there was like the perfect card he could have played. But he still lost. Alrighty, we're playing Buns here, and we got Space Throne as the opening location, and that is Chef's Kiss with our Debris. We're definitely about to take advantage of that. And we also got Sandman and Danger Room. We're going to snap now. We're going to go ahead and end our turn, and uh, really the only negative right now is that he does have priority. So I guess if he has something like, I don't know, Green Goblin, that's going to suck a lot. Outside of that, I think we're pretty good. But we're going to go and throw Debris in, and we're going to just hope he doesn't play anything on Space Throne. And if he doesn't, he snapped too. We're in it for four cubes already, as you can see uh, down over there. He does not play the correct location. Guesses the Cosmo and loses, and now we have Space Throne and probably a free four cubes as we're going to play Sandman into Cosmo, protect him, and uh, just <laughs> win the game. We have Kazar. We can do Kazar Mystique. It's going to be very tough for this guy to come back here. All right. Buns is going to Scorpion us. We're going to go and play our Kazar this turn on turn five. And we're still winning middle too. So we have that advantage uh, as well. Obviously, Patriot would be really nice to have here. But if we don't get him, Blue Marvel is fine. Dr. Doom also isn't terrible. And uh, this Kazar is going to simply bump us up just a little bit over on Space Throne as uh, I think everything is setting in for Buns over here. All right, Buns. Buns is going to Professor X, which is very interesting and makes it a lot scarier. It's going to come down to Danger Room deciding our fate. Are you joking? Okay, guys. Well, here we go. Show me how much Marvel Snap hates Cozy. Worst case scenario, Patriot dies. And, uh, well, uh, his card lives. We would win if his card dies and my card dies. So, like, I think we're okay. Does he play into it? You gotta be kidding me. I can't believe it. I can't process that. Can't do it. What's going on with Sokovia? All right, that's fine. We do have Sandman, so we're going to try to get our uh, cheap cards out really early on. Get ahead of him. He has a zero deck, which probably means he's rocking um, a Shuri, and that's kind of tough to beat with the build we have. However, he can't play in a Sanctum Sectorum, so we just have to win one lane, and I feel pretty good about it. We're going to do Patriot... Okay, we're going to go Patriots, and then we're going to go um, Sandman, and then Blue Marvel, and then probably either Ultron or Doctor Doom, whoever we can pull. Anytime I get a location they can't play into, I feel pretty good about winning. I mean, we're going to play either Doom or Ultron into Plunder Castle. We're kind of locked down, though. There's, like, not a lot we either of us can do. We have Sandman, but he can only play into this lane. And because the deck he's playing, I don't think he's going to play a lot of one-off cards. So this is actually a little bit of a tougher decision because Kazar and Nightcrawler, both of those playing now would be really good. We're going to go ahead and play uh, Sandman, though. We're going to play it safe. He probably only needs to play one card per turn either way. Uh, but now that we got our Doom, we're feeling pretty good. Um, we're going to go Nightcrawler on this turn, most likely. Move Nightcrawler middle, Doom right side. Even though we don't have the blue Marvel buff, we don't really need it. Captain Marvel will definitely make things a bit tougher. And uh, we'll probably go Doom. Let's see this, though. If he Dooms himself, we'd have 10 to his 5. We'd have 8 for the Marvel. And we'd have 8 to the right side. He would win this side. 
but he wouldn't win the other lane, so he has to retreat. So, probably could have snapped on him. Wasn't quite sure what he was going to do. I've seen these versions have a uh, Doom himself. I was playing quite careful, didn't really know what he had, but a good, like, kind of takeaway from this game is Sanctum Sanctorum, Plunder Castle. When you have these lockdown locations and you have Doom, Squirrels, and things that can reach those, you might as well snap. Typically, it's definitely in your favor. So there it is, guys. Dr. Patriot. Uh, I think it's time to start calling them Dr. Doom and Ultron decks over Patriot decks uh, because they do a lot of the heavy lifting. Now, if you guys enjoy the in-depth deck guide, go ahead and let me know by liking today's video. And over 60% of you guys that watch on a daily basis have not uh, clicked the red subscribe button. And it, it, it helps. I hate asking, but you know, the YouTube algorithm. Okay, guys, have a good one. We'll see you in the next one. And uh, happy snapping.